Here are some of the main reasons why this passage was not written by Josephus. Josephus was Jewish and not a part of the sect known later as Christianity. He would never have written that Jesus was the Messiah, nor would he have hinted that Jesus was not merely human but divine. The passage, as most insertions do, interrupts the flow of the surrounding text. All we need to do is remove the passage and read the surrounding text before and after to see that this is true. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The passage is not quoted for over 200 years by any church father until Eusebius in the 4th century, even though several fathers, including Origen, quoted from Josephus and would have been quoting the Testimonium Flavianum like crazy had it existed at that time. Perhaps even more problematic, Christian writers much later than Eusebius failed to mention the passage even though they also quoted or wrote about Josephus' works. These are Chrysostom in the late 4th century and Photius in the second half of the 9th century. The fact that a church father writing about Josephus in three different writings would pointedly ignore the Testimonium Flavianum indicates that his copy of Antiquities of the Jews simply did not contain the Testimonium Flavianum. Another strange thing about this passage is that if Josephus did write it, it is the only time Josephus mentions the sect known later as Christians. For him to simply make sweeping summary statements of Jesus and one sentence about Christians in all his voluminous writings certainly doesn't add up. Since this would be the one and only mention of Christians in all his works, why didn't he elaborate on the sect as he did many other sects he mentions? Wouldn't Josephus have known about the Christians in Rome and the whole Nero fiction since it allegedly happened only about eight years before Josephus came to Rome after the Roman Jewish War? But he says nothing of this in his works. Another indication that this is a much later insertion is the way the author views Christians in his last line. It seems more like a statement one would make hundreds of years later instead of just a few decades later. And the part about his disciples not forsaking him. We might conclude that the person who inserted this had never read the Gospel of Mark. In Mark's account, all the disciples forsake Jesus. One final thought before we leave Josephus. He does mention several people that do appear in the Gospel accounts. One of them is John the Baptist. Now some of the Jews thought that the destruction of Herod's army came from God, and that very justly, as a punishment of what he did against John, that was called the Baptist, for Herod slew him, who was a good man. Herod who feared lest the great influence John had over the people might put it into his power and inclination to raise a rebellion. Accordingly, he was sent a prisoner out of Herod's suspicious temper to Machaerus, the castle I before mentioned, and was there put to death. At first blush, a Christian might say, Aha! Josephus mentions John the Baptist. This corroborates the gospel story. But does it? Isn't it more problematic that Josephus mentions John the Baptist without mentioning Jesus at all in the same passage? Why would Josephus pointedly ignore the relationship between the two and never make one mention of it? Wouldn't that be the appropriate time for Josephus to mention Jesus and how John the Baptist was a forerunner and basically initiated Jesus' ministry by baptizing him? Is it possible that there was no Jesus, and that the Gospels basically commandeer John the Baptist and make him subservient to Jesus. And their information about John the Baptist came from Josephus. And why does Josephus give a different motive for the killing of John? He claims that Herod killed John to quell a possible uprising. But Mark and Matthew both claim it was because John had insulted Herod's wife, Herodias by telling her their marriage was not lawful since she had been married to Herod's brother. And so she gets revenge against John by tricking Herod into killing him. 
It's not a good sign when your star witness provides contradictory testimony of the events. Now let's have a look at the other mention of Jesus in Josephus found in Book 20 of Antiquities of the Jews. So he assembled the Sanhedrin of Judges and brought before them the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ, whose name was James, and some others. And when he had formed an accusation against them, as breakers of the law, he delivered them to be stoned. One reason to wonder if this is an interpolation is the grammar. Who introduces the subject of discussion by way of his brother first? Steve, I'd like you to meet the brother of Ralph, who is called the plumber, whose name is David. What the? How convoluted is that? But let's say he did introduce James by way of a Jesus reference first. There's still some odd things in there. In all of Josephus' writings, he uses the word Christ only twice. Once in the Testimonium Flavianum, an obvious forgery, and the other in the brief mention in Book 20 of a James who had a brother named Jesus. This suggests also that both of these are later Christian insertions, as the term Christ seems foreign to Josephus' writings. And if we remove the clause, who is called the Christ, we are left with a passage that could be any Jesus as the brother of this particular James. The insertion, if it is an insertion, of who is called the Christ would have had to have been inserted, however, within the first 150 years of its publication. As Origen mentions this passage and the clause, who is called the Christ, in his writings around the year 248 CE in his work, Contra Celsus. In this same passage, Origen explicitly declares that Josephus did not believe Jesus was the Christ. So much for the Testimonium Flavianum, I suppose. But I'd say 150 years is certainly plenty of time for a Christian insertion to creep into Josephus' work. As you can see, there are many reasons to believe that the Testimonium Flavianum, as well as the other brief mention of Jesus, are later Christian insertions into the text. The TF, quite possibly by Eusebius himself. A case of trying to shore up the absolutely deafening silence of history concerning the existence of the Gospel Jesus. Much more could be said concerning why Josephus did not mention the Jesus of the Gospels or even Christianity for that matter, but check out the description of this video for some more links regarding this.